We need to look beyond COVID lockdowns and destructive rallies too tonight because the story broke this weekend that will please many of you who don't like greenies denigrating the reputation of our fabulous natural wonders in this country. In what is a major defeat for Beijing and a major win for Australia, a push to have the Great Barrier Reef's health status downgraded to in danger has failed. We haven't had many wins against China in the last year or so, but we'll take this one. The 21 member countries of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee agreed to repeal a draft listing that would have changed the reef status and cost this country dearly. It could still happen, and we need to keep fighting against these attempts. And I'll get to North Queensland very shortly on the show to explain what's at stake here. But UNESCO is led by China, and this is a major loss of face for the communist government in their attempts to intimidate and hurt this country. And they only have themselves to blame because they were pushing to rubbish the reef without even carrying out a single scientific on-the-ground assessment. And we can thank Bahrain, of all nations, which blocked the draft listing and was supported by Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ethiopia, Hungary, Mali, Nigeria, Oman, the Russian Federation, Saudi Arabia, Spain, St Kitts and Nevis and Uganda. What an odd collection of Australian allies. And, of course, it was Senator Susan Lee that had to go to some of these places to earn their support. So UNESCO delegates will now travel to Australia to examine the reef. Lucky for some. But this was what the Federal Environment Minister Susan Lee had to say to me yesterday about the latest vote. The 21 countries, including Australia, that sat around the table last night actually listened to the argument, which was that why would you list the greatest natural ecosystem for climate change pressure when the whole world is responsible for climate change? Yes. Don't single out Australia. We weren't happy with the process. I'm happy with the outcome. So this is a win for our reef communities, for the reef economy, and for those that work so hard to look after this global treasure. Yes, the Chinese were blaming climate change for our... Uh, bad water quality, bleaching of coral in the reef. This from a mob that's doing absolutely nothing to contribute to climate targets anywhere. And as we know, green groups are outraged that we don't have a carbon tax and we don't stop coal production, which they say will save the planet, which is false. And so the flimsy conclusion is that everything here is in danger, solely because we apparently aren't doing enough to fight climate change, which is also false. I'm sure that when UNESCO sends in the assessors, They'll discover what's alive and thriving on the reef, what has naturally adapted to any change in water temperature or bleaching, and they'll also learn about the incredible work being done to protect it, especially from those coral killers, the crown of thorns starfish. They might be in for a rude shock when they eventually get to the reef. So the scorecard stands at China 10, Australia 1. We're fighting back. But think about this. The Chinese-led UNESCO will go to the reef because it wants to investigate the truth behind any damage that has been done to the Great Barrier Reef. If only they took the same approach to the world's request to get into the Wuhan Virology Lab to investigate the truth behind the damage done to the world from a suspected lab leak of COVID-19. Only when it suits them. So there are some very relieved tourism leaders in Queensland this weekend after this UNESCO decision. Now, to understand what's at stake here and how much a downgrade of this kind will hurt our economy, I'm joined now by the Executive Manager of Enterprise North, Kevin Byrne. Thank you, Kevin, for coming on the program. Uh, it's a pleasure, Chris. Thank you for having me. You and other Queensland business leaders <coughs> and those in tourism must be relieved about this decision. Well, we certainly are because uh, it's very, very important for us and it's important for the communities right along the eastern seaboard of Queensland because that's where the Great Barrier Reef straddles. And uh, I think it was a win for common sense and it was a win for the truth because, as you correctly pointed out, and uh, the minister who's been, uh, uh, frankly, very, very supportive of our position and... Uh, She's done a power of work in the last couple of weeks to overturn this, and we're eternally grateful for her, uh, overturn the recommendation, uh, I might, might add. But uh, uh, she's worked hard and, and been very, very supportive. And it's a great outcome for us because it gives us now time to really get the truth out there about what is happening here uh, and uh, the effects a listing or an upgraded uh, 
listing would have on our tourism uh, and on our, uh, you know, the custodianship, if you like, of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, there's a lot of players here that are involved and uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, talk very seriously about how the reports are written from the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, the Australian Institute of Marine Science and other people who write these reports uh, uh, for other people to interpret. And uh, we need some nuancing around the wording and uh, we need some actual uh, factual portrayal of the real situation on the Great Barrier Reef at the moment. So if you think about the attractions that we have in this country, I don't think that outside maybe Sydney Harbour there's anything more attractive or compelling than the Great Barrier Reef. So if the Great Barrier Reef um, has an in-danger uh, strap on it to every tourism agency around the world, I can only just imagine the hit on tourism to Australia. Well, exactly, Chris. And, uh, you know, the Great Barrier Reef is synonymous with Australia. It's certainly synonymous with Cairns. We picture ourselves as... or We pitched ourselves, sorry, as the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, it contributes... Uh, we have 40% 40, 40 of our tourism revenue to our part of the world comes from international tourists. And mm. uh, the Great Barrier Reef is on the bucket list of international tourists. The Great Barrier Reef sustains tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, people up and down the Queensland coast. It gives joy to millions in the world every year. Yeah. And certainly it gives a great deal of pride to Australia uh, on the efficacy of our custodianship of this great natural... Uh, wonder of the world. It's, a, it's just a magnificent resource. And to get out there and have a look and see it factually yourself is really awe-inspiring. And most of the uh, visitors that come here leave with an awe-inspiring uh, attitude uh, about the Great Barrier Reef. We want to keep it that way. It must leave a bit of taste in your mouth that there's so much politics wrapped up in this. A bit of China trying to seek revenge. Um, you know, uh, all these countries that need to be mollycoddled to get on our side. Enormous politics. Well, you know, the UNESCO uh, is a committee of uh, the United Nations Cultural and, and, and Scientific uh, uh, Committee, and, and the politics is forever present when you talk about the United Nations. So we have to be on our guard yeah. whenever we go into these organisations and we have sites listed... Uh, we're awarded custodianship, for want of a better term. Uh, we do it very, very well. We're very professional. We have some wonderful reef operators. We have some people up and down this Queensland coast that just do a hell of a lot to make sure that the reef's safeguarded, including our farming communities that have responded magnificently yep. over decades. And I've been involved in this region for decades now. I know exactly who puts in the effort and I know exactly the pride in which we hold our responsibilities in terms of uh, looking after the Great Barrier Reef. We'll continue to do it. Yep. And I need to say, while I have had this opportunity, and thank you for your support, uh, is that it's probably never been in better, Nick, in, uh, for the last couple of decades as it is now. That's great to hear. Um, that is great to hear. I've run, I've run out of time, Kevin, but thank you very much, and we'll keep our eye on this development right the way through until when they get here. Thank you. And thank you for your support, Chris.